Welcome everyone to a new installment of Ever Wonder TV, the place where all of your wondering thoughts get answered. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and remember to hit that notification bell to stay updated on all our latest content. In today's video, we are going to look at what Earth would look like if all the ice melted. Are you ready? Let's get started. Melting of ice from glaciers and other frozen water bodies at the poles or on mountaintops is directly linked to rise in level of global warming across the world, which is further dependent on the amount of fossil fuels burned. The ice melts and causes the water to drain into the sea, resulting in the sea level to rise by a significant number of feet, which is alarming. There is an abundance of ice on Earth measuring to roughly 5 million cubic miles of ice, and a few researchers say it would require over 5,000 years to liquefy everything. On the off chance that we keep adding carbon to the climate via burning fossil fuels, we'll probably melt all of it making the planet iceless with an average temperature of around 80 degrees Fahrenheit rather than the current 58 degrees. The ice on Greenland and Antarctica is formed of freshwater, so when it melts that's about 69% of the world's freshwater supply that's going straight into the oceans. This may wreak havoc on our ocean currents and weather patterns, but this is not even the worst part. If the half of freshwater ice that's not a part of Greenland or Antarctica thaws, like from the Himalayan glacier, it'll pose together of the most important threats due to what's trapped inside, toxic chemicals like DDT. Scientists discovered that glaciers like this will store these chemicals for many years. But as they thaw, those glaciers release the chemicals into rivers, lakes, and groundwater reserves, poisoning all as they're going. Another 1% is hanging out underground, mostly within the Arctic tundra, has something called permafrost. Permafrost is organic matter that's been frozen within the ground for two plus years. Now, one among the foremost immediate problems with thawing permafrost would be poisoning. There are an estimated 15 million gallons of mercury stored up within the Arctic permafrost. That's almost adequate to the quantity of mercury everywhere else on Earth. On top of that, the organic matter in permafrost may be a tasty meal for microorganisms. After they digest it all, they fart out two of the most potent greenhouse gases out there, CO2 and methane. Scientists estimate this might double the present levels of greenhouse gases within the atmosphere and potentially cause global temperatures to rise by 3.5 degrees Celsius compared to today. A few investigations estimating paleoclimatic intermediaries including carbon isotopes, fossils, basic proportions, and plant stomata endeavor were conducted to measure at what CO2 level the Antarctic ice sheet vanishes. The upper layer of the ice sheet's solidness is somewhere close to 500 ppm and could likely approach 800 ppm CO2. By then, the Earth would be on an irreversible point, its path to becoming ice-free. One potential gain from all this would be that while we may get to the 500 ppm tipping point in the following century, it will require a millennium for all the ice on the planet to completely liquefy, thus giving people ages to adjust to a fiercely extraordinary planet. Given Earth's present CO2 level of 409 ppm and an expansion of 2 to 3 ppm each year, it's not far when 500 plus ppm will occur. Ideally now, paying little mind to the activities that result in increase in temperatures should put a halt on a pattern toward an iceless Earth. Regardless of whether it's characteristic, natural, man-made or both, people have some adjusting to it. The issue at hand is obvious. The humans will have to change their lifestyle in order to accommodate to the necessary changes as ice melts and seas rise. Also, environment changes will take place such as lesser and occasional precipitation, making majority of fertile land infertile. In addition to the rise in sea level and flooding, another major change that will take place will be the alteration of Earth's rotation. The Earth pivots about its axis once every day, except it doesn't do it so consistently. The pace of this rotation changes by up to a millisecond each day. Melting of Earth's ice, such as from mountain icy masses and the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets, will change the Earth's revolution. 
However, this is only so if the meltwater streams into the seas. If the meltwater stays near its source, there is no net development or movement of mass away from the glacial mass or ice sheet, and the Earth's revolution speed will not change. But in the event that the meltwater streams into the seas, there is a net development of mass, and the Earth's pivot will change. For instance, if the Greenland ice sheet were to totally melt and the meltwater were to fully stream into the seas, the ocean level would ascend by around 7 meters and the Earth would turn all the more gradually, with the length of the day getting longer than it is today by around 2 milliseconds. Melting of ocean ice, for example, from the Arctic ice cap doesn't change ocean level because that the ice makes up for its lost volume and subsequently doesn't change the Earth's turn. Planet Earth would be drastically altered because of the ice melting, but every continent will suffer a different fate depending on its altitude and distance from the poles. Some of the major countries would drown, causing them to disappear from the map. This means that there would be a mass relocation of millions of climate refugees. Even though the numbers are not certain as a lot of uncertainty lies about the total volume of ice caps on Earth, it is estimated that if all of them were to be melted, the sea level would rise by 230 feet. This implies that all coastal cities across the globe will be flooded and will be at an increased risk of storm surge with the potential risk of famine, destruction, and warfare. East Antarctica the East Antarctica ice sheet is so large, it contains four-fifths of all the ice on Earth, that it would seem unmeltable. It survived earlier warm periods intact. Lately, it seems to be thickening slightly because of worldwide warming. The hotter atmosphere holds more water vapor, which falls as snow on East Antarctica. But even this behemoth is unlikely to survive a return to an Eocene climate. West Antarctica like the Greenland ice sheet, the West Antarctic one was apparently much smaller during earlier warm periods. It's vulnerable because most of it sits on bedrock that's below water level. The warming ocean is melting the floating ice sheet itself from below, causing it to collapse. Since 1992, it's averaged a net loss of 65 million metric plenty of ice a year. North America the entire Atlantic seaboard would vanish alongside Florida and therefore the Gulf Coast. In California, San Francisco's hills would become a cluster of islands and therefore the Central Valley an enormous bay. The Gulf of California would stretch north past the latitude of San Diego. Not that there'd be a San Diego. South America the Amazon Basin within the north and therefore the Paraguay Basin within the south would become Atlantic inlets, wiping out Buenos Aires, coastal Uruguay and most of Paraguay. Mountainous stretches would survive along the Caribbean coast and in Central America. Europe London, a memory. Venice, reclaimed by the Adriatic. Thousands of years from now, during this catastrophic scenario, Netherlands will have long ago surrendered to the ocean, and most of Denmark are going to be gone too. Meanwhile, the Mediterranean's expanding waters also will have swelled the Black and Caspian Seas. Africa Compared with other continents, Africa would lose less of its land to the last word sea level catastrophe, but Earth's rising heat might make much of it uninhabitable. In Egypt, Alexandria and Cairo are going to be swamped by the intruding Mediterranean. Asia Land now inhabited by 600 million Chinese would flood, as would all of Bangladesh, population 160 million, and far of coastal India. The inundation of the Mekong Delta would go away, Cambodia's Cardamom Mountains stranded as an island. Australia Predominantly desert, the continent would gain a replacement inland sea, but it might lose much of the narrow coastal strip where four out of five Australians now live. Regardless of the public opinion on climate change, Earth's ice is melting at a rapid pace, which will soon prove to be a grave danger to the majority of the population, and in order to prevent such an event from occurring, severe measures need to be taken to minimize the risk. If you liked this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future. Also, hit the bell icon to stay up to date and be the first one to watch our latest videos.